Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Pamela's Crochet and Knit Corner. I am Pam and I am a crocheter who knits a bit. I live in sunny Southern California in the Inland Empire with my family. And yes, it is still sunny even though it is fall. But how is everybody doing? I know it's been a while. Thank you guys for all of the love on my last podcast and for all of the likes and the thumbs up. I totally appreciate everything. I have a jam-packed episode for you today, so I'm going to get into it. This is episode number 42. I'm looking over here because I have some notes. That doesn't mean I'll always follow the script. I do write notes. On this channel, we kick it old school style, so I hope you have a pen and pad ready. Get ready to take some notes. I do not edit, so what you see is what you get. If I make a flub or mistake, I will correct it in the description box. I will post links to YouTube tutorials that I discuss. I don't post links to Etsy shops, uh, Instagrams and things like that because I don't know how to do that and I'm not a techie and this is fun for me so I don't wanna stress out. So I will write the names and give you as much information as possible. I hope everybody is well. Let's get started. Episode number 42, December 1st. It is December, you guys. Guess what's right around the corner? The holidays. So I hope everybody has been knitting and crocheting and working on their gifts. I am going to start off my episode with some of my finished objects, then I'm going to move into whips. And then towards the end, I have some happy mail. I have some acquisitions. And for the first time ever, I have an advent calendar. Yes, I am super excited and super stoked about that. I've always wanted an advent calendar. And this year I have one. So I've already done my opening on Instagram, but I am gonna do an opening here with you guys and show you my advent calendar and how it's all packaged up and everything. And I'll explain to you what that is. So I, if you want to stay tuned and stick around for everything, I appreciate it. If not, then you can um, choose to bid me adieu when you see fit. Okay, but I hope you stick around. Let's go. Do you guys, I'm gonna start off with, do you guys remember these? <laughs> Priscilla from Distinctive Crochet. She blessed me with this ladybug, Starshine, and I commissioned this ladybug star shine. So thank you, Priscilla. I love them. I am not going to do a naming contest. I decided to name them myself. So I just wanted to introduce you to Sophia Starshine, and she has pink bling. I love pink things. And this is Lincoln Ladybug. I thought that was appropriate. So Lincoln and Sophia, and they are part of my crew. If you're new to my channel, I have a crew. Uh, you will meet two of my crew this evening. They're going to model some beanies for me. Um, if you're new, you'll be meeting them. If you're a regular subscriber, then you will recognize them right away. So I do have a crew now. Oh my gosh, I lost count, probably seven. Um, I have some amigurumis, I have some model heads, and I have, oh, right behind me, that's Emerald. That is my freeform uh, stand, and she is wearing that poncho by Bag of Day Crochet, and I put bobbles on the bottom of it. You guys remember the death by bobbles? So there's one of my crew members, and you will see a couple of more later on. So let's start with finished objects. If you hear any life noises, comings and goings, 
please excuse them. My first finished object is It's in this very cute bag. I love project bags. I keep all of my projects in a bag. Inside there is a plastic bag so that the remnants of the yarn uh, do not attach themselves to the insides of the bag. So that's why you hear crinkling. Oh, and I didn't get the name of this yarn either. Uh, Nova Scotia Skies. This yarn is Hobby Lobby. It's absolutely beautiful. I love all of the blues and the greens. The variegated mixture is super pretty. So using this yarn, I made a gift. I've been having fun showing all of my gifts and then gifting them to people. That's been a lot of fun. Here we go. That's the back, you saw my ladybug. Look at this, isn't that nice? This is none other than a Ross hat. Ross smells like yarn. He has free patterns on his website. Ross is a crocheter who is also, I call him a yarnologist. He knows everything about everything and he's a knitter. So on his website, smellslikeyarn.com, he has free patterns for beanies. So I love, love, love the pattern. It's great, it's simple, it's fun, it's easy to knit. The only change I made was right here, you do the brim, and then before you get into the body of the hat, I always do a row of pearls, purling. I like that, it separates it really nicely, it gives it a little texture, so, this beanie is a gift and I busted out those DPNs so that I could get that nice swirl at the top of the hat. Love it. So this came out super cute. This yarn is wonderful. It is 100% acrylic. So I like that for beanies. I put a ladybug on everything that I make. I think ladybugs are good luck and I love them. So I put one on all of my makes and I will add my tag to this uh, once I'm done with the podcast. Love this, this is great. And look how the colors played out. I just knit, knit, knit and didn't do any color controlling at all. So there's the Ross beanie with a P twist, I see a Pam twist <laughs> right there. And if you guys are interested in that pattern, it's smellslikeyarn.com. And I will put that information in the description box. So this is all ready to be gifted. My next finished item is super cute. I used it's getting ready to fall, sorry. I keep all of my information on a index card and I put that with the project. So just in case I put it down and I forgot where I was or what hook I was using, it's all right here. This is called the Colorful Corded Scarf. I used my thick yarn. This is a Karen Tea Cake. And it's starting to come out of the packaging here. Um, I don't see the colorway right now. Gosh, I'm rusty, you guys. I haven't recorded in a while. My apologies. <laughs> the name of this colorway is called English Breakfast. I like that. And this is a... Um, Super bulky yarn, it is a size six. So, look at this, you guys. This is called the Colorful Corded Scarf. Now this is crochet. 
It is very, very cute. It is super quick. I put the pom-poms on the end of it. The uh, tutorial does not call for pom-poms on the end of it, but I thought that that was cute. And look at the texture on this. I literally crocheted this in an hour, maybe less. And it is very, very, very cute. It's something that you can wear anytime, all the time with multiple outfits, uh, depending on the color of yarn that you choose. You use chunky yarn and I used an in hook. And I mean, this went by super quickly. This is a YouTube tutorial by the Double Stitch Twins. They have been around for many years. They are twins and they are crocheters and most recently knitters. They are super talented in the fashion world of crochet. Everything is fashionable, uh, quick, um, stylish, easy. You can check out their YouTube channel. I will link the channel that this tutorial is on below. And maybe you can whip up a couple of these for Christmas gifts. The Colorful Corded Scarf by the Double Stitch Twins. It almost looks like a, a snake. <laughs> Super cute, really fast, quick. Get you some size six yarn and a big hook and crochet away. My next finished object, once I got a taste of using my thick yarn, I went all the way to the back of my stash shelf, oops, excuse me, and I pulled out another Karen cake. Look at those colors, very pretty. I pulled out another Karen cake and this is also a super bulky six. Uh, the name of this is called Pumpkin Chai. Very pretty colorway. And I kept that in hook going and I made a beanie. I knew this would happen. Okay. I didn't follow a pattern. So I guess maybe I created a pattern. I don't know. But this, isn't this adorable? It's so cute. And I just decided to put two palms on the top of it. In the back, no San Andreas fault. There is my ladybug. That's a bigger ladybug. I was gifted some large ladybugs. Perfectly straight in the back. That's one of the things that I really, I have to do that. It bugs me if it's not straight. Um, Bob Wilson, one, two, three. She has a hat recipe for keeping the back straight. And I will link that below. Um, I've always used that for years. And then I just started crocheting. I just started crocheting and changing stitches and I really like it. Very cute. So that's just my basic hat pattern. I just kind of did that on a whim. Let me see if I can get Windsor to try it on. This is Windsor. For those of you that are new to my channel, she is a member of my crew. So I'll be right back because I'm gonna have her try this on. We are back and this is Windsor. And she has on the hat. 
that I just made. I really like it. I jotted down what I did, the stitches that I made. Um, I doubt very seriously if I'll publish a pattern. Pattern writing is a lot of work, um, but I do have it written down and I probably will make another one. If you're wondering what's right behind me, uh, that futuristic looking kind of Christmas tree, that's exactly what it is. My husband found that last year and voila, it's easy to assemble. All you do is put it together and plug it in and that's how we're doing it this year. So I really like it and pretty soon there will be some presents underneath there. So you because you can see it sticking up behind my head and you're probably wondering what is that it's our christmas tree okay on to my next finished object this one was out of my wheelhouse <laughs> definitely um i was glad to try it i like how it turned out it's a cupcake Now the light goodness is blowing this completely out. But look at that. How cute is that? I absolutely love this. Kim the Crafty Nomad, this is her birthday month and she was having it's not a contest, but she asked that you make her a cupcake. Um, so the first thing I did was look for cupcake tutorials because I'm a tutorial person. Um, I'm visual, a visual learner. Sarah Satch, her tutorial from Posh Pooch, huh, Posh Pooch Designs popped up and this cupcake was super simple. I grabbed some of my um, leftover yarn and followed the tutorial exactly. And I absolutely love the way that it came out. So this cupcake is for Kim the Crafty Nomad. And you can go to her channel and watch her video. She tells you what that's all about. If you guys want to join in, you can. So this is my cupcake for Kim. Happy birthday, Kim. So I enjoyed making that so much. I made another one. <laughs> and this one's a little bit bigger. Very cute. I just changed the bottom. I put my tag on that one. And um, this yarn was variegated already. And you make the little... <laughs> Just super cute, super fun. Um, I will link the tutorial, the cupcake tutorial below. So these are from Sarah Satch. Cupcakes. Happy birthday, Kim. Very fun and something different. That's my first time making them. My last finished object is a set and this set well the cowl is from fiber flux um, i love her videos i love her tutorials she is a big fan of the v stitch so it's always a fast quick make um, this particular tutorial is how to crochet a quick gift cowl and this is perfect for a gift. It took maybe an hour or so to make it. I used Barcelona. I've had this yarn for quite some time and um, couldn't think of a good project to use it for. So this is all I have left. 
This is Barcelona by Loops and Threads. Very pretty colorway. And this is the cowl. Look at that. And you can see the V stitches. So it's the yarn is thick enough to keep you warm, but you can also get some air. And I made it tall enough where you can pull it up over your nose or if you take it and roll the top down, that looks really nice. And it displays some more colors from the inside. Very, very nice. Nice quick gift. So I thought not only would I make that, again, I just grabbed my hook, an L hook, and I made a beanie to match. This is crochet, you guys. Look at that. All I did was start crocheting. That's all I did. So double crochets. I think I did a row of half double crochets, and then I did the front post, back post, double crochet for the brim. And again, no San Andreas fault. None. I love it. And there's my ladybug. So I didn't follow a pattern. I just started crocheting and my little pom-pom on the top, I use my Clover pom-pom maker, the small one. So super cute, very cute. So that makes a nice set and that will probably be a Christmas gift for someone. Those are all of my finished objects, I believe, yes. So let's take a trip to Whipville. Whipville is uh, what I named uh, my whips. Um, I do have quite a few, but I have been working on them. Um, some of them are still in progress and I cast it on a new whip. This is a beauty right here. It's in my bag. Isn't that great? Those are bees. This bag was made by Brad. Brad is the husband of Zach Stout. The Stout Stitch podcast, Brad is the one that makes the bags. This is really nice, it's really thick, and it's lined. Perfect for a shawl. So inside of here, I have the Block Stitch Shawl by Hooked by Robin. It popped up on my feed and I thought, ah, oh, this is beautiful. I had the perfect yarn for it. I bought the yarn last year. And of course I keep a plastic bag inside. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys, this is what happens when I don't tape for a while, no matter how hard I practice or make notes. This beautiful, beautiful yarn is called Batik Swirl. Look at that. Look at those, I mean, this yarn is amazing. The colors are beautiful. They transition subtly, um, beautiful. I'm on my second cake. There's supposed to be almost 600 yards in here. This is 80% acrylic. It is 20% wool. The cool thing about it is you can put it in the machine. It's machine washable and you can dry it on a cool temperature, which is perfect. Are you guys ready? 
Look at this. Wow. Now, I am not finished. This is a whip. I want it to be a little bit longer, but look at the colors on here. This is absolutely wonderful. I love the stitch. It's not a granny stitch. Do you see the blocks of color? Henceforth the name, the color block shawl. Look at the blocks of color. The yarn, I did not color control. I just started crocheting and the colors played out beautifully. I like the openness of it. And I just added the second ball at lunchtime today. That is pretty. That is so pretty. So I can't wait to finish that and I'll keep you guys updated on that. But it is the block stitch shawl and hooked by Robin. It's a YouTube tutorial from her and it's relatively recent because this just, excuse me, this just popped up on my feed. Um, November 17th, I wrote it on my card. <laughs> November 17th is when I started working on it. And I will keep you guys updated. My last whip that I'm going to show you is in this beautiful, beautiful bag. This is by Rail of the Dabbling Hook. I'm a huge fan of her bags and this is absolutely beautiful. It has bling on it. I casted this on, sorry for the crinkling, and I am using I Love This Yarn by Hobby Lobby, and look at that, I hope you can see, it has black flecks in it. And this yarn is 100% acrylic, so you can wash it and you can dry it. The colorway is called Red Tweed. So it has black Tweedy bits in it. Very pretty and very holiday-ish. So I cast it on, this is Knit, another Ross hat, and I'm using my Bettina Cubics I like these. And so I cast it on another Ross hat. But this time I did not do the row of purling. Ah, I don't know what's wrong with the lighting tonight. My apologies. I just did it exactly like he said to do it. So this will definitely be um, a Christmas um, gift. And this is a Ross hat that I just cast it on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. This is not the last finished object. I just told a big, huge fib. I made not one, but two mermaid tail blankets. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, there's a backstory. The first one I'm going to show you was actually a two year old whip. A couple of years ago, I was perusing through YouTube 
and the video popped up of a mermaid tail blanket. And I thought, oh, that would be so much fun to make one for myself. I'm an avid reader. Um, so I'd love to, you know, curl up with my Kindle and have a blanket on me. And I thought, oh, what did, that would be so much fun. So I right away went out, I got the yarn and I started working on it. Um, the tutorial is called Crochet Lovers. It's from 2016 or 2017. I will link it in the description box, but I like it because it opens from the back. You're not stuck down inside of there where you're shimmying it off. You just open the blanket from the back and your feet are tucked inside of it, which is perfect. I abandoned it. I didn't finish it. I stopped working on it. I was almost finished and I don't know why I stopped working on it. My niece, who is grown and a mother, she calls me about a month ago and she says, hey auntie, her daughter, Celine, who is my grandniece, she wants a mermaid tail. And she sent me pictures of mermaid tails. Well, it just so happened one of the pictures was the one that I had already made. And I said, oh, I've already made one of these, but it was full size for an adult. So I made another one. Hold on. The first one is in this bag. I won this bag in a giveaway from Rail of the Dabbling Hook probably two years ago. So I kept it in here and I finished it. Are you guys ready? I hope the light doesn't blow this out. Okay, I'm gonna have to step back because this is big. There is the mermaid tail. Now I added the flowers on. But I can't even get this all in the frame. This is the tail. And this is the entire mermaid blanket. Now, the cool thing about this is it opens in the back. You see the opening here? Right here. So from here down is where you stick your feet and your legs. And then this opens. It opens like a blanket and you can just climb out. You don't have to worry about shimmying out. So this is huge. This is nice and thick. The yarn that I used is um, Charisma by Loops and Threads. And this has, this was the only one that had colors of the blues and that remind you of the sea and things of the ocean and stuff like that. So I wish I had a better way of, of showing it, but this is it. So I finally finished it. And this one is a gift. She doesn't watch me, so I'm not worried about her seeing it. mermaid tail. <laughs> oh my gosh. I totally stepped out of my comfort zone with that one. It's very quick to make. Um, I really like the tutorial. It's very well um, spoken and you can understand all of her instructions. 
Okay, now for the second one, this one is for my grandniece. I kept it in this bag. It says, this bag contains magic. I love this bag. I got this at a beauty supply store. They were getting rid of them for $3. So inside of here is the second mermaid tail. I used the same yarn, which is Charisma. Oops. It's Charisma by Loops and Threads. And this is the colorway that I use this time for my niece. She likes pink just like I do. So I thought this would be fun for her. So this is the one for her. And that's blowing out totally. I put the flowers on. The tutorial doesn't call for the flowers. And if you notice inside of her flowers, there are beads. So I put beads inside of the flowers. That is blowing out. And that's her tail. And this opens in the back. It's the same concept where it opens in the back and she can just kind of shimmy all the way down in there and be nice and comfy and it's like a blanket. Love the way she has you make the tail. It's super cute. Now I will say attaching the tail, um, no, but the way that this comes out is absolutely beautiful. It's really pretty. And you can stop increasing on the sides when you want to, or you can increase all the way out. So it'll actually, it'll fit an adult. Mermaid tail. Yes, me. <laughs> this is crochet. So this will be, uh, now that I've shown it to you guys, I held on to it so that I can show it to you guys. I have to mail that to um, Nevada. So that is all of my finished objects, you guys. And I'm sorry if I kept you for a really long time, but I do have some acquisitions. I do have um, some happy mail and I have some yarn to share with you. So if you are not interested in those things, then thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. Everybody's doing Vlogmas now, so I know you have a plethora of choices. Thank you for choosing me. Please don't forget to subscribe. This is my subscribe pillow from Tanika. Hi, Tanika. Please. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to do that thumbs up. I appreciate you guys and everyone, please be safe, okay? And take care and I'll see you on the next one. If you're going to hang around, stick around. I have some more goodies. I'll be right back. I am back. And if you are still here, thank you so much for hanging in there with me. So let's get to it. The most exciting thing for me this year is having an advent calendar. An advent calendar is something that indie dyers um, usually put out for um, makers and anyone that wants one. You usually order it several months in advance. And what it is, is it consists of minis. So most advent calendars, they package a mini every day. You get 24 minis. And then on the 25th, which is Christmas, there's usually maybe a full skein of yarn or something that's a little larger than a mini. Um, there's all kinds of goodies inside of the advent calendar package. Um, they run anywhere from $150 all the way up to $300, depending. They can be very pricey and I'm not, that is a good thing 
they are worth it. Um, hand dyed yarn is a lot of work and I admire the dyers for all of the work and all of the effort and everything that they put into it. So I was lucky enough to be able to afford one from Southern Skeins. Z told me about it. She had a great uh, price going and um, it worked out. It worked out, you guys. So I, for the very first time, I have an advent calendar and without further ado, what I did was I opened it this morning and I posted on my Instagram. So I'm doing an IG story about my, um, my daily uh, opening of my advent calendar. Um, I can't do Vlogmas to, to do a video every day. My hat is off to all of you guys that do that. That is awesome and it's a lot of work. But um, like I said before, um, I'm not that interesting, so to, to vlog every day, <laughs> but anyway, um, this is my advent calendar from Southern Skein. Most advent calendars are sock yarn, so I found, there's goodies, I found a pattern. I am going to make the Copenhagen cowl by Fiberflex. And this is an older video, uh, well, not so old, it's from 2019, and she uses sock yarn to make the cowl. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's dig in. I'm going to transfer all of this from this box. I just wanted you, you guys to see how it's all packaged up. I'm going to put it in, I have a basket. I have a basket that I'm going to sit underneath my tree because I opened it underneath my tree this morning. So this is the project bag. She gives you the instructions, um, Southern Skeins. And this year's theme is Comfy Cozy. Think mistletoe, holly, cinnamon, cider, campfires, warm mittens, flannel, and cocoa. So she has everything listed here that's in there. This must be a special goodie. I'm not going to open this just yet. There is some tea and there are some stitch markers. So now I'll show you guys this. There we go. This is for the 25th, but all of these little boxes in here, there's 24 of them, they are numbered. So I will open box number one. Number one and inside is a mini and this particular mini is called mistletoe so this is my first one and i get to open another one tomorrow so advent calendars are so much fun because every day you open your box with the number on it for the day and you get a different mini every single day leading up to the 25th of december and i am going to roll this up in a ball and start on my Copenhagen cowl. Um, and that way it'll be made of all of my advent calendar minis. I did collect some minis um, in, oh! <laughs> in anticipation of making my own advent calendar, uh, but now I have one. So thank you, Southern Skeins. I'm excited to open tomorrow's box. My next acquisition, um, I've been wanting to purchase something from Kamisha of um, Kamisha's Home Body Shop. 
for quite a while. I've been following her for a long time. I mentioned her before in my previous video. Um, she used to do crochet patterns. I've made a couple of her patterns, cute headband and things like that. And then she transitioned into the all natural um, body and bath um, arena. And I absolutely love it. Um, I love bath things, uh, bath, uh, everything about bath stuff. I love it. The spritz with the lotion, um, you layer it, um, the bath bombs, the shower gels. I love all of that. I was a huge fan of Bath and Body Works. I also like the all natural uh, bath items uh, when I can get them. So I treated myself this month because this month is special for me too. And look how, the, I wanted to show, show you guys the packaging. I think I just lost a wax melt. I wanted to show you the beautiful packaging. And as soon as you open this, the aroma just hits you. So I'm gonna set it on here. This is filled with awesome things. This is cocoa butter cashmere soap. And look at that. Her, her soaps are beautiful. Her whipped parfaits look like something you want to snack on. It's just beautiful. Her packaging is beautiful. And mm, this smells so good. So that is a, a bar soap. This is a whipped body cream sample that she gave me. I ordered wax melts. I love... Um, scented candles and wax melts and things like that that make the house smell good. She sent me some samples of wax melts. I ordered this very cute wooden soap dish. When you use this type of soap, um, it's not good to leave it where it stays wet and where the water's running on it or has collected on it. So this is one of those nice wooden soap dishes. That's perfect for all natural soap. Oh, this is whipped body cream. It's vanilla cashmere. And I have not opened it. Let's see if I can do this gracefully. Oh, she's got it safety tabbed and everything. This is fantastic. I wish you had smell-o-vision. I really do. This is whipped body cream vanilla cashmere. It smells wonderful. I also ordered, this is whipped body cream and this is rose gold. I don't know why my light is blowing out today. My apologies. So she is having a sale right now. She has holiday gift sets. Everything is fantastic. It smells wonderful. It's all natural ingredients. She lists everything for you. Please go on to Instagram and it's Kamisha underscore home underscore body. I'm looking over here because I wrote it down. I, I don't know how to put the link to Instagram, but I will write the name out um, in the description box. Please go check her out. Um, and she is fantastic. Um, everything she makes is wonderful. And I can't wait to dive in. I don't think you guys will be able to see this card. And there's my information. But I will put um, that information in the description box. I received some happy mail. 
I don't know if it's okay to say the names. I didn't ask permission, but thank you. You know who you are. Um, I got a Christmas card, my very first one. It says, warm holiday wishes. The best wishes to you and yours for a wonderful holiday season and a new year. We could all use that and we can all look forward to a new year. So thank you. You know who you are. This was very touching. Um, oops. I received happy mail from uh, one of my subscribers. Um, things like this are always just, I'm always so blown away. Um, the card reads, thank you. She's thanking me. You know who you are. The gist of the card says that um, she's thanking me for inspiring her. And I really appreciate that because when I show you everything that I've made, um, I hope that it will inspire you. A lot of people um, think that shawls are kind of old fashioned and things like that, and they're not. You can wear them several different ways. And all the stuff that I make, mainly shawls, because I love shawls, beanies, um, scarves, cowls, you know, everything. If it can inspire someone, I absolutely love that. Um, I kick it old school style, so I go back to a lot of the older tutorials. Um, and people say, hey, yeah, that's really cool. I made one of those, or you inspired me to make one of those. You inspired me to knit. You know, how cool is that? I mean, that's awesome. So thank you guys um, for watching and for um, deriving inspiration from little old me. I appreciate that. Everyone knows how I feel about ladybugs, and I'm always touched when one of my subscribers sends me ladybugs. Not only are these ladybugs, but these are antique ladybugs. Um, she was at an antique place and she found these antique ladybug buttons. Thank you, you know who you are. These are absolutely beautiful. And if I ever put them on anything, it'll be something that I make for myself. These are absolutely gorgeous. She says, thanks for your kindness and thoughtfulness. Hope you know how very much you're appreciated and what a difference you make. That is so, <laughs> ah, that is so touching. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that you appreciate me and I'm glad that I have um, inspired and touched um, you guys. It's yarn that binds us all together and it's super cool that it does that. I feel like I have friends all over in different states and in Canada and across the world. And it is so cool to, um, to have that feeling. So thank you so very much for these. I really appreciate them. And thank you for the kind words in the card. Thank you so much. Okay, I am going to have to shift some things around here. I'll be right back because I have yarn. I bought some yarn. I'll be right back. I'm back and I have yarn and then that'll be it. Don't worry, it doesn't. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, no. Yes, I ordered from Knit Picks. Now I've ordered from them before, but I wanted this particular yarn called Brava Worsted. I heard a lot of makers talk about it. Um, I've seen a lot of things that other people have made using it. Knit Picks was having a sale. This is a special month for me too. So I thought I'd treat myself to some Brava Worsted. So here we go. So the first color, and let me put these on. The first color is very beautiful. Um, it's called Wine. This is Knit Picks Brava Worsted Weight Yarn. 
It's very pretty. That is blowing out just a little bit. Um, it is a wine color. It's very, very, very nice. It's soft. And in my opinion, that's fuzz. <laughs> this is a meaty, meaty four weight yarn, which I like. I, I love when it's a true four weight yarn. So this is going to feel good on my fingers. For me, the yarn has to feel good on my fingers. That's very important to me. Um, if it doesn't, it's very hard for me to work with it, let alone finish a project. So I bought two of these in wine color. The next color I bought, this looks kind of orange and pumpkinish, but it isn't. The color is coral. And again, this is Brava worsted. This is 100% premium acrylic. It's a four weight yarn. You can machine wash it and tumble dry. And that's what I look for because this will be perfect for beanies. Perfect for beanies. This color is beautiful, I hope. That is a deep, rich, plum purple color. Pretty much true to color on the screen. Again, Bravo Worsted for weight. The color is eggplant. And that is pretty. Beautiful. So I got two of those. And I love gray. As you may have seen, I've made some gray and black items. So I picked up four of this very nice, it's called Cobblestone Heather. Same worsted Brava, worsted weight yarn. There's 218 yards in every skein, but this is nice. It has kind of like a, a halo on it. Very nice gray color. So I picked up four of these. And then what I did was I thought that this would be nice. Look at this. This is lace weight. Oh, that's blowing out. This is lace weight. It is super kid mohair. 72% super kid mohair and 28% silk. Look at that. So I thought I would combine that with this and that would make a very nice, a really nice beanie. I could also combine it with the eggplant. That would make a nice beanie as well. So I'm really excited to use the Super Kid Mohair. You will have to hand wash that though if you do that. The next color, now this is really blowing out. Uh, this color is cream. It's not white, it's cream. The next color, I bought two of these. Uh, this is called Tide Pool. And this is true to color on the screen. It's called Tide Pool. All of this is Bravo worsted, except for the Super Kid mohair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I decided to try something different. I bought three of these. This is called DK Weight Gloss. It's black, but it has a sheen on it. You can see that. So I thought this would be nice also too for beanies and you can combine the mohair with that also too. That would make a nice beanie. So I bought three of these. And this is, to me it's a true DK. It's a little on the thick side for a DK in my opinion. But this is still nice, this feels really good. And last but not least, I bought some Felici sock yarn. 
Felici has some new colors, so I bought just two. And that's because I've used Felici before when I made this. Do you guys know Kensington? This is Kensington, my other model head. And I made this beanie uh, probably last year. Um, this is the Boss Beanie. You can find it on Darn Good Yarn, but Willy Nilly Knits was the designer behind this beanie. And um, this was my first test knit. I used Darn Good Yarn for the first one because Darn Good Yarn is the, um, the sponsor of the Boss Beanie. But then I made another one um, because when you test knit, you get to keep the pattern. I made another one and I used Felici sock yarn. And I held it double and I got out those DPNs and look at that swirl at the top. So I wanted to show you this because this is how Felici works up when you knit with it. And it just works up perfectly striped. So that came out really good. So I'll probably make another beanie, a boss beanie, um, with this Felici sock yarn. Okay, and you guys, that is it. Thank you so very much. Wow, this is an hour. <laughs> I think I put a warning out there that it would be a long one because I had quite a bit. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. If you made it to the end, I super appreciate that. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed, who have given me a thumbs up, who has given me a comment. I appreciate everything. I will be back soon. Everyone, please take care and be safe. And I will bid you adieu. Have a good day or a good evening wherever you are in the world. Goodbye for now.